This episode has been brought to you by My Extraordinary Productions. Let's work on your next film together. Click the link in the description to learn more. Hi everyone, you've been a wonderful audience, but today we're talking about terrible audiences. I recently had an interview with Ryan Leslie Fisher, and if you haven't seen it yet, you should check that out after this video. We ended up talking about bad audiences, just for a little tidbit, which of course brings up the question, how can the audience be bad? As both an actor and a writer, I have been told that the audience is never wrong. They know what they like, they know what they don't like, they give you feedback, and you, the writer, or you, the actor, are supposed to deliver what they actually do want. However, in marketing, you are taught that not everyone is going to be your audience. A lot of people are not going to be your audience, and that's fine. Let's pretend you have a piece of media, and a hundred different people with a hundred different backgrounds have taken a look at it, and they all love it. It is perfect. It is flawless. There is nothing wrong with this piece of media or its execution. How can your audience be bad? The first way your audience can be bad is when they don't show up. Just because it's really hard having a good audience when you have no audience. The next way an audience can be bad is if they are trolls. Their purpose is just to heckle you and berate you. You know, this is the internet. We know those people exist. We have seen them and sometimes they're funny, but much more of the time they are just mean. And you know, you don't need people who are only going to be mean to you. Now that we've gotten those two out of the way, let's talk about something that isn't often thought of. Some audiences were just never taught etiquette. For example, I once did a performance with a choir of people and we were doing it in front of an elementary school and because they're little kids, they think when it is silent, I am supposed to clap. That's how this works. So they didn't pay attention to the fact that we were all silent to take a breath in unison or because there was a pause in the music. They were just clapping at every single silence. So someone has to teach them how to figure out when it's the end of a song versus the middle of a song, just a pause, just a place for a breath or a page turn. Another example of poor audience etiquette that I have seen in elementary schools as well is talent shows. What a lot of families will do is they'll watch a talent show, they'll see their child do their dance or sing their song or do their skit or shuffle their cards or whatever the kid is doing, and then they'll say, okay, our child did their act, we are done for the night, we can go home. Not realizing that that is incredibly disrespectful to everyone else. The children who are performing later, they aren't getting the same size audience that your child is getting. And the parents who are sticking around through the entire thing, they're watching you leave before their child is going on stage. They sat for your child, you have to sit for their child. Or at least you should sit for their child. I don't know if anything's gonna really happen beyond a bunch of judgmental looks. But still, you know, I am from Los Angeles too. I understand that there is traffic that you're trying to beat. They sat for your kids. You should sit for their kids. Now, I did hint at this next point earlier, but some people just aren't going to get it, and that's what makes them a bad audience. Some people love anime, and some people think, wow, these shows have a lot of violence. Also, there's a lot of telegraphing of thoughts and emotions here. Some people love musicals, but other people think, why is everyone else just breaking out in song? Also, how does everyone know the choreography? Why are these people just stopping what they're doing? What's going on here? Some people love sci-fi, and others want to point out that while the story is inherently fine, the science just doesn't work. Like I said before, not everyone is going to be your audience, and that is okay. If you're going to do a musical, advertise to people who like musicals. And if you are going to do sci-fi, advertise to those people. On top of people not getting whatever you're doing, some people literally don't get what you're doing, meaning that they just do not have the background knowledge necessary for this storyline. Maybe they don't understand why this character is intentionally trying to get into car accidents because they are completely unfamiliar with any sort of insurance fraud in which case we should protect those people. Now on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, some people aren't gonna like your material because they have no background knowledge. Some people aren't gonna like it because they have too much background knowledge. When I was doing barbershop and acapella and all sorts of choir and those things, uh, a lot of people wanted to see the movie Pitch Perfect. 
I still haven't seen it. I don't want to see it. I, I know I'm just gonna watch it and cringe and it, it's just, it's gonna be awful. Finally, and a lot of you are gonna hate this one, sometimes the audience likes what you're doing. They're just quiet. Uh, a lot of us in comedy, if someone who is a comedian says, oh yes, that was a humorous concept, we know that that's a compliment. But if a regular Joe Schmo civilian person says, oh yes, that was a very humorous concept, we think, was it? Because you're not laughing, what's going on? And you know, it, it's a whole thing with, with the context and juxtaposition. This is a very roundabout way of saying, look, Sometimes people are quiet. Some people don't react how you expect them to react, but that doesn't mean they didn't enjoy it. This brings us to the next part of the video. How do you improve your audience? The first thing you can do is, depending on your environment, you can briefly go over etiquette. Here are a few things to say to your audience beforehand. We will be closing the doors to the theater at 7.30 p.m. Please be sure to save all snacks for the intermission. Make sure your phone is on silent. Please, no flash photography. Save your applause for the outbreaks and for the end of the show. Finally, disruptive audience members may be escorted out of the theater. Of course, for that last one, you are going to need someone who can escort these people out. The bigger and burlier, the better. The next thing I encourage all of you to do is ask yourself, where is my audience coming from? If you want a good audience, you have to get them from the right source. Let's pretend you have a movie about Dungeons and Dragons. Do you advertise this movie to people who love Dungeons and Dragons and other role-playing games? Or do you advertise to a bunch of academics who love statistics and are currently working on research models? While it may seem like there is some overlap, one group of people does not have the time. Another way to make sure you are advertising in the correct space is you may notice that there are two groups of people who love Dungeons and Dragons, and that's perfect for your D&D movie. But if you actually look at the groups, you'll realize that one group is incredibly supportive of each other, and one group is incredibly catty. Once again, which crowd would you rather draw to your Dungeons and Dragons movie? Personally, I would go with the supportive people. The last and most obvious way to advertise in the correct spaces is think which of these people is going to be more interested? Not just have the time, not just be supportive, but who is actually going to be interested in what you're trying to do? A group of people who is interested in Dungeons and Dragons or a group of people who are into knitting? There may be crossover, but you know, you know the Dungeons and Dragons group already loves what you're trying to sell. Additionally, that knitting group, they may not know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, so if they go to the movie, they are going to be very confused the entire time. Now, I did say earlier that sometimes you do have a more cerebral audience. Getting comedians to laugh at comedy is really tough because they are surrounded by comedy. And getting a lot of professional people to really uproariously react to whatever you're doing can also be tough because a lot of them are professional because it's hard to get them to react uproariously. If possible, I also recommend filling the audience with friends and family members who are going to be super supportive. Number one, sometimes their cheers encourage everyone else to cheer. Uh, thing number two though, if there is a heckler, all of your friends and family and supportive people can bully the heckler out of the audience. Plus, sometimes it's easier to do the thing when you know you're already friends with everybody. Now, if your friends and family aren't going to bully the heckler, you can hire security to do that for you. Now, you're not always doing things in person. A lot of the things you do are online, like this video. In which case, here is a very controversial thing you can do to make a better audience. Now, not everything you do is going to be in person. Sometimes people do things online and instead of having in-person audience feedback, they have a comment section and a very controversial way to have a better audience is to curate your comments. Look, some people decide that it's cool to hate something or they decide it's cool to like something. And sometimes if someone decides it's cool to hate something, they get a bunch of other people thinking, oh, uh, I, I guess I'm supposed to hate this thing too. Alternatively, if someone thinks it's cool to like something and someone challenges their opinion at all, they get borderline violent in the comment section. Now, I personally hope that if I ever get a comment that's really hard to read, 
it is very critically thought out, very well worded, bringing up very valid points, and I hope that I am able to address that feedback in the future. However, no one needs anyone who thinks it's just cool to hate this person, and curating your comments may be the best way to deal with those people. One thing a lot of people do like doing is talking to their audience after the show. Maybe the audience didn't react during the performance because they wanted to see and hear everything, but after the performance they may come up to you and say, oh my god, that was so amazing, or this was really good, or I was just speechless, that's why I didn't say anything. Going back to the media not being live, people can still leave positive comments and people can still write really good reviews about you, so you know, check those out. Even though I just said that you should read reviews because sometimes they're really nice, sometimes people, once again, just want to be trolls in a different format. Sometimes people just don't understand, but they still have to write the review because it's their job. So they write it based off of what they can say. In either case, I recommend taking feedback with a grain of salt, always. A lot of people are seeing the highlight reel, you are seeing the behind the scenes. That's probably the most important piece of feedback I can give regarding this. All right, thank you for being such a good audience and making it all the way to the end of the video. Please leave your glowing reviews below. Otherwise, you can like this video, ask me questions in the comments. You can subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, and otherwise, I will see you all next time.